introduce to you Peter Ford, who's from DMU, um, uh, from the department. Uh, what's the name of the department again? I haven't got it down. Project and Interior Design in the Faculty of Art and Design. And Peter's speciality, I've been to his lab, is um, helping people um, think through new ideas to develop new actual practical products, um, uh, new creative thinking. So you had Toby Moore's talking earlier about the cool curve and different ways to be creative. Um, and now Peter's coming at it. You'll find that he has perhaps a slightly different take. Um, again, bear in mind what you're learning here, you can apply in your mini projects. Um, so Peter's going to be um, with us now till what, quarter to one will be his workshop. And then we'll be running a little bit into an activity over lunchtime as well. So I'll hand you over to Peter now and um, let him make start. Thank you, Peter. And make a fool of myself, I think, probably. But anyway, thank you very much for inviting me along. Uh, can you hear me all right at the back? Yeah? Um, right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a talky talky bit first for about half an hour, if not quicker, and then we'll, we'll get on with a task. Where Sue's not told you what you've been asked to do yet, has she? No. no. But you've got scissors, string, paper, cardboard, etc., etc., at your disposal. Okay. There's three bricks on the floor down there, which will be bricks that will become pertinent to the exercise a little later. So I'll start with the, the talky talky bit first, if this works. Just a little bit, uh, as Sue said, yeah, I'm Peter Ford, and I've been designing products for around about 30 years. It's not like Alcohol's Anonymous, really, isn't it? Alcohol's Anonymous, so I've been owning up to being a product designer. I'm a reader in design innovation at Democracy University. Um, I run most of the commercial design activity out of certainly the Faculty of Art and Design. And in particular, I run the, uh, the Democracy University Design Unit, which does straightforward consultancy work. Uh, for the product manufacturers mainly. But what I'm going to talk about first is uh, my take on what design is a little bit new, uh, and it's really just to get you thinking about um, uh, about design uh, and what it is. Um, being uh, also doing quite a lot of lecturing and tutoring, um, it's been quite useful being in academia to try and reflect on what actually design is, what, uh, what I've been doing. I was in sort of 10, 12 years in consultancy before coming to DMU, having to actually articulate what it was that I was doing almost instinctively as a consultant. So it's been quite useful to reflect on that. So, uh, design to me is the art of minimising compromise. Okay, and that will crop up in the exercise that you're doing because I don't you know, I want as fewer compromises making as possible uh, for the task that you're going to be required to do, but you will have to make some. So for me, design is the art of minimising compromise. To explain that a little bit, I'll contrast uh, the designer with the artist and the engineer, although there's a, there's a lot of overlap in between them. So, um, a bit of Damien Hurst at work here, uh, but basically an artist is only constrained by what he or she would like to do and would like to achieve. Um, if you want to drape the Grand Canyon in red silk, you could do, given the right amount of material and so on. If you want to hang a dead sheet from uh, the, the ceiling of a gallery, you could do. Or if you've got enough money to be deck a uh, skull with, uh, with diamonds, you could do. Um, it, it's me uh, that decides whether, if I'm going to do a portrait of Sue, that I want to use oils, I want to use gouache, or whatever. It's my choice, my decision. I'm taking upon myself the constraints of the media, uh, the time I'm going to give myself to do that, and generally speaking, it, it, you know, um, unless <coughs> it's a specific direct commission, in which case you're drifting more into the commercial side of, of art, perhaps. Rip, what I'm trying to get at is that the constraints, largely speaking, revolve around the person who's creating uh, the, the object, the artifact, uh, the, the, the piece. And you're welcome to disagree with that. That's, that's my starting point at the moment. Now, to contrast that with uh, an engineer, where uh, a specific end result has to be achieved, and you can tick things off. Yes, that's done, that works. The mathematical formula works out. The final element analysis uh, it says it won't break. Because if we don't um, clearly address the issues um, and the criteria that we need to build a bridge or to send a shuttle into space, uh, then there's going to be catastrophic failure. Either you know the, the, the bridge will collapse and cause loss of lives, and we saw what happened with, uh, with one of the shuttle uh, sort of exercises when the, the tiles weren't uh, uh, correctly stuck to the exterior of, of the shuttle. Um, so there is um, 
um, you know, if I happen to want to put a slightly different brush stroke in a different kind of place, it's not going to kill anybody. You know, being extreme about it. Um, so, if I just quickly go back to Damien Hurst's work, just a quick straw poll. Stick your hand up if you actually like those. If you actually want them in your living room. And hands up if you if you didn't, if you if you don't. Okay. Um, who thinks Damien Hurst is not a skilled artist? Okay, so there's, 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 you know, it, you, you're actually saying, well, you generally must think that Damien Hurst must be quite good because he's obviously successful and sells his work, but you, you wouldn't actually have any of his work in, in, in your room. Uh, so there's a little bit of a dichotomy there work, work, working, uh, working, uh, working away. So there's a great deal of um, <coughs> subjectivity creeping into the appreciation of what he does and how he works. Whereas with the engineer, it's right or wrong, largely speaking. You know, I happen to think the shuttle's rather attractive, and I think this is seven suspension bridges isn't actually sort of um, uh, horrific in it at all as a, as, a, as, a, as a structure or something to look at. Uh, but you, it's far more objective in the way you actually can, can look at it. Okay, the designer. Um, I was once, once asked many, many years ago, what does a designer do? And I said, glibly, anything from toilet roll holders to trains. And here I am, sort of uh, 30 years later. I've not done toilet roll holders, but I've done toothbrush boxes. That's close. And although I didn't design the Eurostar, I worked for, I worked for James Garrard for five years, who did. And I did actually spend some time on even rubbing down a model of it. So that kind of counts, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so the, the breadth of what I've gotten up to, I'm talking in terms of products, I'm very much a product designer, um, is incredibly broad what you get up to. Um, We've got two toothbrushes there. Uh, the one on the left is by a French designer called Philippe Staff, who you might have heard of. He was on telly a little while ago. Was actually, one or two of our students were in that program. Um, um, Anna Marie Stewart, who got kicked out at the last minute, I think, was, was actually a GNU student. Okay, two toothbrushes. Uh, the one on the left looks quite interesting. It's by Mr. Stark. And the one on the right is a cheap addis, I think, of some sort. Um, the one on the left will cost you about eight, nine, ten pounds. Um, if you can still get them, which I don't think you can. And the one on the right, probably what, what 90p, £1.50 at the most, because it's not one with rubber all over it. The one on the left, um, it's nice and round, it's nice and organic. You try holding it with a wet hand and seeing it slip around in your hand and you try and do your teeth. <laughs> and uh, notice how you put the wet end down into a cup where it sort of breeds bacteria mm -hmm. beautifully. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a visual statement um, that mm -hmm. Philippe Stark has made. Uh, that I don't actually know who he did this one for, whether it's one of his own or whether he did it for somebody like a lesson. So functionally, the one on the right is better value for money and it works better. So if you want a functional toothbrush, uh, that's the one you're going to buy. If you want a little design statement that you never use on the shelf of your bathroom, <coughs> You probably, and you've got a bit of money and, and, and not so much sense, you'd probably buy the one on the left. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that in a minute with another piece of Philip Stark's work. I actually like his work very much, and uh, uh, having flown a bit recently, you'll find his uh, knives and forks and a lot of air aircraft, and they're really quite nice and they work quite well. Um, so I'm not having a dig. Uh, just before we do that, um, this is a bit of an experiment, and it could go horribly wrong, and I've got to keep my eye on the time because I'll rattle on too much talking, we might have enough time to do the work, but Sue, you'll have to. Tell me to shut up <coughs> in a few minutes' time. Well, I think we need a little while. Are you going to carry on doing the exercise while lunch is being set out? No, that, that will be the judging period. Right, now I agree with that. Well, I need to try and shut it around about quarter past sure. the latest, so half an hour to do a thankless task. For <coughs> uh, and, right, well, we're going to look at two pieces of art, very, very, very uh, expensive and serious pieces of art here. Um, I'm not deliberately not numbered and they're not lettered, so it's kept as neutral as possible. 